A lot of you have been asking me about Kopi Pods and how to start your own culture of Tigger Pods from Reef Nutrition. And so I'm Chad here today to give us some tips on how to exactly do that, like start to finish type thing. Right, yeah, the Tigger Pods. So the, t the species is Tigriopus californicus. Um, the, these animals are native to the west coast of the North, of North American continent, all the way from Alaska to down to Mexico. So the, they have a very wide range. They can handle temperature swings, huge temperature swings. Um, they can handle a, a wide variety of salinities. So it's an animal that we like to work with in aquaculture and something that any hobbyist can start culturing on their own. You can do it in a five gallon bucket. You can do it in a, in a cat litter pan. Um, what we prefer when you're growing copepods, especially the tigger pods, is a lot of surface area for your culture. So not like a narrow cylinder, but you know, like a five gallon bucket works or a 10 gallon tank, something with a lot of surface area so you get a lot of gas exchange, um, a lot of oxygen exchange, things like that. Uh, these animals also don't like a lot of current, so you know a small aeration, so a small amount of aeration is is okay. Keeps the algae suspended, keeps organic waste suspended, keeps the oxygenation going in the system. Um, and and then as far as yeah, like temperature parameters go, they can handle anything from like 40 degrees to, to 90 degrees. It's it's crazy. Um, and so you don't really need to put a heater in in a, in a culture with tigger pods. Um, and then as far as the food goes, we feed them phytoplankton. You know, we're a large-scale phytoplankton uh, facility. We're multi, multiple millions of gallons of it. And so we can grow a lot of these animals. Um, and so, yeah, feeding them a blend of phytoplankton like our Phyto Feast, which is um, the most concentrated phytoplankton product on the market, uh, you, can, um, you can culture them with that. And, and then as far as like other information on like growth rates and, and reproduction and you know how long it takes for them to get to sexual maturity, things like that, we do have information on our website under our FAQ section, um, tigger pod aqua, uh, culture kind of thing. And we also offer information on how to culture our other copepods, the Parvocalinus crassirostris, which is primarily used in aquaculture, and then Apocyclops panamensis, our apex pods, which use in aquaculture and in the hobby, we provide some information on those as well. Um, and, and of course, there's other there's videos out there of yeah. me working in, in uh, the Apa Cyclops Apex Pods culture room, where I kind of did a video walkthrough, so you can search for that kind of stuff on YouTube and, and uh, find out for, for more information. And you can also reach out to us on our tech support uh, email or through social media, and we can answer some questions through there or direct you towards the information you need. So, okay. so yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and, and, and what's great about a hobby is growing their own copepods is, you know, the cost, you know, they get to save some money. Yep. Uh, and they can also use them to keep the existing populations in their reef tanks, you know, supplemented, keep them, keep them flourishing, especially in the, in, in the face of any predators you might have, like mandarins, pipefish, seahorses, even some wrasses and butterfly fish will prey on copepods. So, it, you know, it can be a really win-win situation for people. And you get to grow something that, you know, you're learning about it while you're growing it. Like most people don't even, I've never, never even heard of what a copepod is, let alone the word. Um, they're one of the most abundant animals on the planet. So they're a big part of the food web in, in virtually every aquatic environment. And, and so for, for a hobbyist to learn about that and grow them, that's really cool. I mean, this whole thing is a huge learning experience for us all anyway. And so to add something like that to your, to your brain, you know, um, that's it's pretty cool. So Yeah, and just taking that step to try to culture your own is a huge learning process. And uh, a lot of, a question that I get often, could you share little tips about um, water quality, like ammonia building up in, yeah. in the water as you're trying to raise these? Right, right. So yeah, one of the cool things about the tigger pods is they can handle some pretty foul water. Water. Um, we, we usually run them in batch cultures and we'll let them go for about 70 days and not do a single water change on the, on the system. And actually it's beneficial for the system to get dirty because all of the organic waste that settles to the bottom of, of the tank, which we call mulm, mm -hmm. um, the nauplii, the baby copepods, they get down in that stuff and they live in there and they eat it and they, you know, they use it as like a habitat. It's kind of a habitat and a food source for them. And then once they go through their different stages of development and reach their juvenile stages, then they start swimming up into the water column and joining the rest of the, the animals that are reaching the sexual maturity adulthood. Um, and so, so yeah, you do not need to keep a tigger pod culture super clean like you would an aquarium. It's actually counterproductive. Um, and, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, it doesn't get any easier for something like that. And that's, you know, again, that's why we like working with them. 
not only are they super nutritious and really good for you know certain animals, but they're 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 bulletproof. They're really hard to kill in a culture. Yeah, and that's very cool. And once they're once they reach that maturity level where they're swimming up, and you see a lot of them in. Um, your five gallon bucket or whatever, that would be the time that you want to split the culture. And that just means like yep. splitting it into another container so that way um, you can keep that culture going or pour some into your tank and get them going in your tank. Exactly, now that is like the trickiest part of this all. Um, when, in aquaculture, we always recommend you have at least two cultures going at any given time. You know, if one of them is struggling and the other one's doing great, then you're good. You know, if one of them crashes, you at least have a backup. Um, and and so the yeah keeping keeping multiple cultures going but knowing when to harvest and how much to harvest can be really tricky usually after you put adults in within 30 days you're going to start seeing those juveniles coming up and and you can use a flashlight to shine through the side of the bucket to kind of see them all swimming around and look at the size ranges because you can see with the naked eye the difference between the juveniles and the fully mature adults um, and also you can pick out the females with eggs because they have this large egg mass mm -hmm. on what is called their urosome, which is like a tail. Um, and so, so it's really, yeah, you get, it's really tricky. Cause usually what we do is we harvest an entire culture mm -hmm. and then we keep all of the babies, we keep them behind. And so what we do is we use a 300 micron screen and we separate out most of the juveniles and adults from all of the nauplier stages, all of the larval stages. Then we use those larval stage animals to start the next culture. That becomes our next brood stock. Um, the only problem with that is you have to have enough cultures going to where you're at different stages of that. Yeah. So you, you, don't, you don't necessarily want to do that. You want to start a culture with adults, um, but you don't want to pull too many adults out, right? So it, yeah, it can get tricky. Right. It's, you know, you kind of just have to learn as you go and, and play it by ear, so to speak. And um, it's, it's not a one size fits all. It's not, you know, you add this much Fido for this many days and this X number of pods comes out. That is so hard to do when it comes to these animals. So, yeah, it's really hard to give solid advice on, on how, to, how to manage that. Yeah. Well, very cool. So I hope that answers some of your questions out there when it comes to raising tigger pods for yourself and culturing uh, your own. Thank you so much, Chad, for talking yeah, to me. Okay. Always, a, always a pleasure.